Hi, and welcome back to Ask a Pennsylvania Dutchman. My name is Chris LaRose. This here is Doug Maidenford, our resident Pennsylvania Dutchman. What's new, Doug? Well, I, I, I don't nothing. know. Nothing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get right into a it. A lot? Then. I don't know. Yeah, anyway. Yeah, go okay. ahead. All righty. Well, this question comes in today from Kevin Rogers of Hinkleton, Pennsylvania. Hinkleton, Pennsylvania. Boy, it don't get more Dutch than that. Yeah. And uh, Kevin Rogers wants to know, would you please comment on the Pennsylvania Dutch tendency to carry a grudge for a lifetime? <laughs> and I say yes, we can. And speaking of that, Kevin Rogers, I remember that one video you didn't comment on six months ago. Or like, don't think we didn't forget that. Yeah, and we won't. Ever. You know, there's a lot of things that the Pennsylvania Dutch are stereotyped. Cheap. Cheap. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hard-working, uh, upright, honest, curious, but then they're stubborn. Stubborn, yeah. Mm. And I have to admit, holding a grudge is, uh, it might be a favorite pastime <laughs> of, of some, <laughs> some <laughs> Pennsylvania Dutch. You know, I know some Pennsylvania Dutchmen that are holding grudges for three generations before them. They didn't even live it, but they're still holding the grudge for their grandfather <laughs> from 60 years ago. <clears throat> Look, I can't explain it. All I can, my interpretation of this, and I, I'm guilty as well. Is your old man hold a grudge? Oh, absolutely. My old man holds grudges over the, some of the craziest things I've ever heard. But I think we have to step back now and take a look at it from a bigger picture. All right. If I hold a grudge about something, or if anybody holds a grudge about something, it must be because it's something that, that they feel important about. That they feel that, you know, that there's a reason why I'm angry about something and I'm going to own that. And, I, you know, that's something that it, it speaks to me. Well, when you get into but, the older people, then it's the, like my dad, he forgets what he's holding a grudge about, but he still holds a grudge. And he's like, well, I'm upset. And there must have well, been a good reason, so I'm going to keep well, being upset. Yeah, because if you don't, then you're a quitter. Yeah. You can't quit. <laughs> you don't give up. Well, the pen, that's, you would never, you don't start plying a row in the field and get halfway to the end and be like, I'm well, done. I'm done. you got to go all the way to the end and then turn around and come back the other way. If you quit, <laughs> well, then, well, what's that? This is Nick's if you quit. Yeah. So you got to hold that grudge, even if you forget. Yeah, there's some truth to that. You know, I just, I think I really appreciate people that have a passion for something in life. And I don't care what it is. <laughs> well, Even I if your passion is being angry. I, well, if that's your thing, then you've got to own it. I don't, there's so many people today, everybody's so fake. And nobody wants to take a stand about anything. They don't want to stand up for what they believe in. They're afraid to say what they They're want so to say. They're so wishy-washy. They're wishy-washy. You know, but I will give the Pennsylvania Dutch people that. My father, if he thinks X, then he will think X his whole life. Yeah, that's and the this, you do. Uh, now, right. Now, some people might say, well, that's stupid. Because what if, what if Y is the truth and X is proven well, wrong? This is, now, let me finish. Right. I'm going here. So I'll remember something. that. I hope I remember where I was going. <laughs> I don't know about that. If I, I appreciate the fact that there are people still out there in our society that are willing to take a stand about something, and not at the next minute cave and walk away. Even if you're wrong. Even if you're wrong. Well, I, I like to use the old PA Dutch uh, tactic here for when you hold a grudge. If you believe in something that's obviously wrong, believe in it long enough until it becomes true. It's kind of like jazz. Like, if you're playing jazz music yeah. and you hit a wrong note, you just hold that wrong note until you forget what key you're playing in, and then it becomes the right note. So it's just like that with holding grudges. If you're holding a grudge against something and you're wrong, just wait it out. Eventually you'll be right. That's, that's how you... <laughs> just hold the wrong note and eventually it's okay? That's like the well, guy in the... No, it's like, it's like, who said this? There's a famous quote. George Costanza on Seinfeld said, It's not a lie if you believe it. <laughs> One day you can just hold the note until the key change, and then act, well, just act like that I was meant to do that. Yeah, that's yeah. Our, our is that what jazz is? is? Is that what you're saying about jazz music? It's just a bunch of musicians that just play stuff, and it, they just play, and everyone thinks, oh, that's jazz. It's supposed to sound like that. Who's gonna? Who's gonna? <laughs> who's gonna, gonna argue? Yeah. 
Oh, I don't know. If they do argue, just just keep arguing back until they believe you. Take a stance, yeah, and hold that grudge. Yeah, it's true. Who asked this question? Kevin, Kevin, (coughs) you're right. We as a people, stereotypically, we like to hold. I don't know if we like it, but we do it. We do it really well. I think some people do like it, though. We hold grudges. And I think it speaks to our character more than anything else. Is it... Um, is it bad? Maybe in some instance, depending on what the grudge is, sure. But I also think it shows a little bit of the other side of our character, which is that when we believe something to be to be the right thing, we're willing to go to three generations <laughs> down the road to defend it. And I think there's there's power in that. I'm now, wondering if is the Hatfields and McCoys were actually yeah, they might have been. Yeah, they were. <laughs> it could have been, but. I think there's. I think that says something about us and about our character. Now, again, there are times when it's when it shouldn't happen. I agree right off the bat. There are some grudges my father holds that I just shake my head at, and I don't plan on carrying them on for him after he's gone. <laughs> but it also shows something about my father that he truly believes in, and he's willing to keep holding that grudge, even though he might be wrong. But that he, it shows, it shows that side. And I really think that that's one of the weaknesses of society today. That everybody is so Nobody one minute, to one minute they anymore. say thing, one thing X, and the next minute when they're with a different group of people, they say Y. Just so they, I don't know, just so Strength they. Strength the character. Yeah, that's what I, that's mean. what we build. So Kevin, yeah, it's a part of us. Maybe it's not our greatest quality, but we got it, and we got it bad. <laughs> and I think that's something we just have to own. Maybe. Man, yeah. that's about what it comes down to. All righty. Well, you heard it from the Dutchman. My name is Chris LaRose. This here is Doug Maidenford. Yep. And until next time, Mox Good. Yeah, Mox Good. If you have a question, why you have to email us at busterpa at yahoo.com. <laughs> you know, we play these shows. So anytime I play a wrong note when we're singing, I should just look, turn to you and say, that was jazz. <laughs> yeah. That's what I should do. Oh, yeah, we'll do that this time. Yeah, tomorrow. Do, okay. Yeah. Uh, oh, wow.